And you might be thinking of an area of your life where you feel stuck, where you would say, if only I didn't, mm. or if only I could. Mm. And what you're longing to be able to, to be able to do or something you're longing to be able to live. And it's just felt like that impossible dream. Well, let's bring it in right now and turn toward it and say hello. So let's take that, I want to write, but I don't. So you take yours, I want to, mm, but I don't. Make that phone call, organize your desk, get into the music studio. I want it, but I don't. And let's change the form of language to something in me doesn't. So I want to write and, because we're going to change every but inside us to and. I want to write and something in me doesn't. You feel that? Now what happens when we say something in me doesn't instead of oh, I don't or I mm -hmm. curiosity. We begin to turn toward whatever that is inside us. Curiosity is one of the greatest transformative powers because it's impossible to be judgmentally curious and you want to bring radical acceptance, non-judgmental, radical acceptance. Because if you already knew the answer to why you're stuck, you would not be stuck anymore. So every single thing you think you know about why you're stuck is not actually true. Or at least it's not the whole story. So there's something inside you that does know. And the only way you're going to find out, I believe, is by turning in there toward it with radical acceptance and interested curiosity. So the day I did that with my writer's block, the part that didn't want to write, I found something very interesting. I needed to bring that question into my body because I understood that my mind, my consciousness, did not know the answer. So I asked the question in my body, I'd like to feel the part of me that doesn't want to write. And I waited. I didn't just think, oh, I know what it is, or I think I know what it is. I just waited. And my body began to express, it, made, it began, that part of me that didn't want to write, that had been so long out of awareness, began to show up like a little hunching over, a little ducking. And I, be, and I began to sense it was a ducking like there was a big target right behind me. And I was down in a shooting range. This part trying to get me to duck so I wouldn't get shot at. Memories came of living with my dad and what it was like to have him shoot me down with sarcasm every time I was expressive. Who do you think you are? Show off. So my body was reminding me how that had felt like being shot at. And I realized what's really important here is my relationship with this inside me that's been protecting me all these years from getting shot at again. So I said to it, I really hear you. You have been trying to keep that from happening to me again. And a deep sigh went through my body. And no argument and no 
Well, let me tell you how it's going to be different now. No, just a big space. And in that space, that in me began to melt and transform, and I felt the warmth flowing through my body. And it was a warmth of gratitude. And the next day, writing was easier. It was easier. But I do want to tell you today about the day it all released. And I think it was about a month later. Because I, I was really inspired by this time. And I knew if writing's easier, but not completely easy, then there's still a further dialogue to happen. So I went back. I went back again to that place. I didn't know what to expect, but I guess I partly expected if I invite again the part that doesn't want to write, I'll get this kind of thing again. This was completely different. This time, the part that doesn't want to write showed up as a feisty teenager inside me. She had her, she had her, she had her hands on her hips and she was like, I don't want to do anything that I have to do. And I knew from that that I had become or I had got identified with a little bit of a parental voice in me. You have to write. And I was getting the feedback from inside. I don't want to do anything I have to do. i have been divided against myself, treating a part of myself like something that has to be made to do something. And that process of forming a new relationship, <laughs> it makes me want to dance. <laughs> that process of forming a new relationship with that teenage part of me in that session, I just said to her, wow, of course you wouldn't want to do what you don't, what you have. And at the end of that process, my body didn't feel any different because it felt pretty good at the beginning. And I kind of didn't think anything had happened. But the next day, I went home and walked toward my word processor in the morning. And instead of having to drag myself there like I had for the last 25 years of my life, I felt this teenage energy pulling me toward it, saying, oh boy, let's write. So that's what I mean when I say that inside the most despised places is the life energy to move forward. And that by turning with interested curiosity and compassion toward the very places that have felt like the darkest and the biggest problems. And by doing that with radical acceptance, I invite you to be curious about that journey too. And thank you so much.